Hi there, my name is Doug Hills, and this is the Manga Studio Guide. Today's episode is going to cover a question I get a lot from users of the program. Is there a way that I can save my comic as a PDF? This was a feature that existed in Manga Studio 4 EX, but unfortunately was not included in Manga Studio 5 or 5 EX. But, that doesn't mean the ability to save to PDF can't be done. We just have to look outside of the program to do it. So I thought I'd go over the ways that you can take your comic and save it as a print quality PDF on both Mac and Windows platforms. And the really cool thing, you'll be able to do this trick regardless if you're a Manga Studio 5 user or a Manga Studio 5 EX user. So, let's begin with you Manga Studio 5 users out there. I'm going to export this page as a print quality JPEG with crop mark print guides, which I could then send off to be properly printed and bound once I collect it into a PDF. So, from the main menu, File, Export single layer, JPEG. I'm going to save it in my sample folder here, but I'm just going to call it page one. And for the export settings, I'm going to change the image quality from 100% to about 95%. This is so that the file size isn't too large, but I can still have a nice quality image. If you aren't concerned about file sizes, you can keep this at 100%. I'm gonna select the output image choices, in this case text if there were word balloons, and the crop mark. Set the desired expression color. I'm going to set auto detect. Keep my scale ratio at 100%, switch from 4 illustration to 4 comic, as I want to try to get the line work to be as crisp and clear as possible. That said, if you're doing a color piece, kind of test out each version and see which looks best for your final product. Change rasterization from fast to quality, and press OK. And now, the page is saved in my sample folder here. Now, we would need to do this for each page we would eventually want in the final PDF, so this process will need to be repeated until all the pages are exported and ready to go. Manga Studio EX users get a somewhat more streamlined approach to this process, assuming that the pages are collected within a story file. If not, you would have to go through the process I just went over. Anyway, let's assume that the pages are all within a story file like the one you see here. What we're going to do is use Manga Studio EX's batch export feature located on the main menu under Story, Batch Process, Batch Export. We select the location we want to save our pages, I'm going to put them on the desktop, and I'll create a new folder to hold the pages. And then we can either use the story files page prefix here or we can enter our own. Select our page range. In this case we want all the pages. If there are two page spreads in the story we could choose to export each half separately or keep them merged. Select our file format, again JPEG, and press OK. I'm going to use the same JPEG export settings that I showed earlier. 95% quality, text and crop mark selected, auto detect color depth, 100% scale ratio, for comic, quality rasterization. We can choose to select our output range to be the entire page, the page up to the bleed, or the page up to the inside of the crop. Now I'm going to keep it on full page. Once these are all set, I'll press OK. Manga Studio will process each page in the story. And when we look on the desktop in the pages folder, we have our six pages all numbered and ready to go. So now that the pages are ready, it's time to make our PDF. If you're on a Mac, you'll be happy to know that the process of saving a PDF is actually built right within the operating system. Now with our pages here, we're just going to either click and drag to select them all, or you can hit Command A to select them, right click, and open with Preview. So once the Preview window appears, you should see the thumbnail view here. If not, come up to the main menu and select View Thumbnails. Here we can make sure that the pages are in the proper order. If they're not, you can click and drag until everything is in the, the order they should be. So once we're sure things look as they should, we select all the pages in the thumbnail view by pressing Command A, and then from the main menu, File, Print. I'm going to click on Show Details because we want to get to the advanced settings here. Now, because the pages are 11 by 17, I need to go to the Paper Size drop-down list here and select Manage Custom Sizes. I'm going to create a new one for 11 by 17. So I press the plus button here, change my paper size to 11 and 17, and I'm going to zero out the margins as I don't want them in the final PDF. Finally, I'll double-click on the name and change this to 11 by 17. PDF. Press OK. And now it's set to 11 by 17. I'm going to switch from scale to fit to scale just to make sure that the line work is as sharp as possible. I'm going to come down and switch from preview to paper type quality. Change the quality from normal to maximum DPI so I'm getting the best possible quality for saving. And we're all set. All we do now is instead of pressing print, we're coming over here, selecting PDF, and clicking save as PDF. We enter in the name for our PDF. Select where we're going to save it. I'm going to save it on the desktop. And then I can enter in title name, author name, any information you'd like to include with the PDF, and press save. And now, I come to the desktop. I have my sample PDF here, ready to go. Complete with print marks and everything. Now let's talk to you Windows users watching. 
Now, unfortunately, there isn't a native print to PDF function like Mac users have. However, there is a way to fix that omission. Do PDF, which I have a link to down in the show notes, is a free program that will perform the same functionality as OS X's print to PDF function. Simply download it, run the setup function, and you'll be ready to go. And by the way, this is just one of many different types of print to PDF programs. If you have a particular favorite that you'd like, I'd say go with that. I happen to like this one because it's a small program and didn't come with any prompts to install toolbars. Now that the program's installed, we can close this and bring up our sample pages. We're going to do something very similar to what I just did with the Mac users. I'm going to click and drag to select all the pages, right click, and select print. And this is going to bring up the print pictures dialog box. I select do PDF 8 from the drop down list here. Select my paper size. If you don't see 11 by 17 here, just select more and then scroll until you find 11 by 17. It's actually one of the presets. Set your quality. I'll have it at 300, but you can choose whichever you'd like. Generally, 300 DPI is an acceptable quality for print. Make sure full page photo is selected. Deselect fit picture to frame. Click options. Click printer properties. And this brings up the do PDF properties. We can change the orientation. If it had defaulted to landscape, you can switch it to portrait. We can change the resolution from 300 to any of the presets here. We press OK, and then we press print. We select where we want to place our PDF folder. I'm going to place it back on the desktop. Press save. I'm going to select high quality for my PDF options. Change the name and press OK. And a few seconds later, as it processes each of the pages, we have a PDF right here, all set and ready to go. And finally, if you're an EX user in Windows, you get one additional option for PDF creation. You'll be able to print your story file to PDF right from within the program. So coming to the main menu, we go to File, Print Settings. Now check out Episode 3 if you're not familiar with the Print Settings dialog box. But for time's sake, we're going to use these print settings here. And we're going to click Execute Print. I'm going to select instead of my regular printer, the Do PDF option. Click Properties. Change my page size to 11 by 17, portrait, set my resolution, I'll keep it at 300 DPI, 100% scale, press OK, print out my entire range, press OK, save to my, again, I'm going to save to the desktop, call it sample 2, select high quality for my PDF, and press OK, and a few seconds later, it may take a couple of seconds for do PDF to place your new page on the desktop or wherever you saved it, you're good to go. And that's all you need to do if you're an EX user and you're using a story file to organize your comic. One last thing before I go, if there are Mac EX users out there asking, well, why can't I print directly to PDF like you just explained to the Windows users? It's because the option to save as PDF from the print dialog box overwrites the previous page printed for some reason. So when all is said and done, you're going to be left with a PDF containing only the last page in your story. That's why it's better to create the PDF through preview. So while it may take a few extra steps to do this, it is possible to take your story and create a PDF with them. Is it the ideal method to do this? Well, I guess it's going to depend on you and what you're looking for. I have a feeling I will be revisiting this in the future, or at least until the option is included natively within the program. Either way, I hope that this workaround can help you out as you publish your comics in the format you're looking for. And that's going to do it for this episode, which was brought to you by Patreon subscribers like the ones you see here. Thanks, guys. If you'd like to support the Manga Studio Guide and help me keep these videos free for everyone forever, you can subscribe for as little as a penny per video on Patreon, or you can buy page templates, rulers, guidebooks, or just throw some money in the tip jar on my Shopify site. Thank you all for your support and for watching these videos, and I'll see you next time.